Hey, True Believers England team here, and I'm with Eric Back Issue Breen. Good evening, kids. All right, so we are here to talk about the top 10 Superman artists. And I'm going to put quotation marks around 10 because we may we may talk about more. We're definitely probably mentioned more than 10. And uh, this is going to be a little bit different because I don't – I think every one of these artists are – excellent in their own right so i don't want to go 10 9 8 7 because um i don't know just i think it would be proper let's have a conversation let's talk about artists and so forth and so on and what he means is we're going to be employing conference team math here <laughs> where the big 10 has 14 teams and the big 12 has 10. that does not make sense to me at all that's but, why they're in college. Yeah. Uh, uh, right offhand, though, if you are talking about the best artists of uh, Superman, you, you have to at least speak a little bit about Schuster. I mean, the, you know, without without Schuster, <laughs> you don't get any more Superman artists. It's a short so, list. Yeah. So whether or not you actually like the the art from the fr from the original Superman stories, he deserves that kind of respect at the very least. Absolutely. Well, I kind of was leaving it open for you to take the ball on that okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no, you, you summed it up pretty well. Now, if you applied even 50s and 60s standards to Joe Schuster, would he be in the top 10? No. But compared to other art of that era, his art fit that era perfectly and he his art got better as you know as he went yeah. on and it fit the character for those early days okay let me ask you a question what do you think of the original shield because if you look at the the oh this this means hope you know and, and, and on earth it means an, it's an s if you look at that it it really does not look the same it looks like a shield on Superman's chest in, in the original uh, stories and everything. The coloring is just a little bit off. You could tell, you know, they, they, they didn't quite have who Superman was going to be at that point, obviously, since it was the first time you saw. But um, what did you think of that original look? Well, again, you're putting that in. I mean, it, it was the late 30s. Mm -hmm. it, nothing, no comic art was really sophisticated. And most of the better known characters were guys wearing tuxedos with opera capes or yeah. just a pair the, of the drop with, mask. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was a early prototypical superhero costume mm -hmm. and they had some kinks to work out as they went. And, Wait, uh, but that's why uh, when I'm talking about Schuster, I really want to uh, speak in a honorary term. He's the guy who drew him first. He's the guy who created Superman. Another honorary, but I'm going to, I am he, in all my, in my opinion, he's on the list. He's on my list, Eric, but you might think we have to put him honorary because, um, they're not on in comics, but that's got to be Max and Dave Fleischer. Uh, these these cartoons, I have a big box set of Superman movies, and all the cartoons are there, and I've seen them, and they are fan-freaking-tastic. And by the way, this, I believe, is the first time we saw Superman fly. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! That, yeah, I think you might be right there, because these were 1941. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think he was still leaping tall buildings in a single bound up to that point. Yeah, the, the shading in these films, the they it, it was almost like the uh, I think they did do it the same way they did the Batman series where they were drawing it on black paper, and it looks amazing. You you look at this animation, all I think of is this is so far ahead of its time. I think animation in general was more painstakingly done in those days because it was they they were you know, there's there's no television yet so you were competing with the movies mm -hmm. you look at some of those old disney you know, cart or disney movies like, like fantasia mm -hmm. for example and i know the fleischers also did popeye yeah and it's just they, they, there's i think they used a 12 12 12 ratio or 12 frames per second 
and the 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 time spent on each frame it, it, it's as anybody that hasn't seen these cartoons you're doing yourself a disservice you absolutely get a hold of them watch them I try to get them out and watch them at least once a year. I love there's a I know you're you know the the one I'm talking about, but there is a building falling into another building, and Superman lands on the side, and he says, and you can actually see the strain in his neck, everything as he's picking the building back up and everything. Uh, of course, the famous scene, the one that gets played anytime anybody mentions a Fleischer cartoon, which is. Um, the one where he's flying and he's actually hitting the laser beam. <laughs> I was just going to bring that up. Yeah. yeah. So there, there are a yeah. lot of iconic scenes from these things. And, you know, Lois, what a femme fatale. Yes. <laughs> Lois Lane before the comics code messed her up. A lot of people don't know this because they just know Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, where she's like, oh, I hope he marries me. Clark, stay away. Uh, but before that, she was really a girl Friday. Kent, you help Lois follow up her lead. She may have an angle on this thing. Yes, sir. But, Chief, I'd like the chance to crack the story on my own. Well, no. Thanks, Chief. But Lois. You know, she was the smart, quick-talking uh, reporter that thankfully they, they recreated when John Byrne came around. But, um... Yeah, she got destroyed by the comics code, but they had the Fleischer one. Yeah, the Fleischer one had the hard nosed reporter. And, and this was before the mild mannered reporter from a great metropolitan newspaper persona had been set in stone. Mm -hmm. This Clark had some stones. So that, you know, that's another thing about this cartoon. He was kind of a badass, you know, both, yeah. you know in the three piece and the Superman suit. Okay. Now the thing is, is while we're talking about this in all honesty, uh, we're not, uh, we're going by memory. We're not holding up comics. We don't have every, I don't have everything around me here that, to reference Superman. So a lot of this is from memory. I might embarrass myself again because uh, I do have to ask, this is, didn't he have um, at one point in time, didn't he have, a black logo is that yes yes he did superman which it brought up with the kingdom come thing so alex ross must have you know must have been inspired when superman went dark because instead of yellow behind the s it was black just adding to uh, adding to the depth of the character and the depth of the art it's just wow i, I want to watch the cartoons now <laughs> I want to sit back. Aren't aren't they in public domain? Some of these have to be in public domain, except for the trademark. Let's watch a couple. That would be really cool. Um, yeah. I, okay. So uh, I do know there's a couple of great comic book artists that were born at this time. Would you like to talk about one that uh, what one of the earlier uh, greats? Well, okay. If we're if we're going in somewhat chronological, order. I think we are. Why not? Uh, and I, I'm going to put these three gentlemen together. Okay. Win Mortimer, Wayne Boring, and Al Plastino. They handled the lion's share of the art on the Superman books in the during the 40s and 50s. They were kind of they they were who got us from Schuster to Swan, more or less. Now the you know steady, not spectacular. And you'll rec you would recognize Wayne Boring the first time you see one of his panels because when Superman takes off, he always has one leg lifted and the other one straight, and has that. That was that was his trademark. The you know, this bit go to pose. Yeah. So these guys, I said, did the heavy lifting to get the character through those two decades. And I think if I had to pick one of the three, I would say Wayne Boring. Wayne Boring. Yeah. 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 Despite the stock pose i would say he's the best of the three and kurt swan took that pose and made it his own for years after that but well i i would the one that's in, in my head next would be kurt swan but uh you uh, i almost want to save him for last to tell you the truth um out of respect we can do that yeah because look um yeah we'll talk about him later 
Okay, kids, there you go. That's part one. I decided I'm going to break this down because it ended up nearly being an hour-long conversation about Superman's greatest artists. So this will be broken down into a few videos. But let us know who else, what else should we be talking about as far as the best of comics, as far as the worst of comics or anything. And uh, let, put it down in the comment below. Just comment, comment, comment. Uh, of course, click like and share and all that kind of stuff. Help us out with the algorithm there. But I really want to know, who do you think is the best artist? Obviously, we talked about Golden Age here today. Um, let, let us know in the comments below. And uh, who else or what other topic would you like to hear us talk about? And don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and please help out the channel by going over to Patreon or Ko-Fi, drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep the lights on, helps keep making videos for you. This is the way I make a living, so you are actually helping us keep the lights on here. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.